So everybody on board, I will call the meeting to order. And uh, Madam Clerk, can you take the roll call, please? Uh, yes, Chair Gitterice. Here. Vice Chair Amarelli. Here. Commissioner Ackerman. Here. Commissioner Bangle. Here. And Commissioner Corey. Here. And All are I present. Did, thank you very much. I forgot to mention today is Thursday, February the 4th. This is a regularly scheduled 6 p.m. meeting of the City of Menifee Parks, Recreation, and Trails Commission. Uh, I'd like to ask Commissioner Corey to please lead us in the salute of our flag. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, ready? Begin. I pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the of United, United States, States of America. Of America. America. And to the republic, republic. To the republic for which it stands, which it stands. One, nation, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you very much. Welcome. And now uh, I'd like to move on to item number five on our agenda, which is selection of chair and vice chair. And so having done that, I'd like to open the floor up to uh, Nominations. Point okay. of order, Mr. Chair. Point of order. Um, yes. I haven't been. I haven't taken the oath yet, so I don't think I'm official. Oh, hey, you're right. They've. I've got that. I skipped one. I apologize. Oh. <laughs> I should have been on item four. Thank you, Scott. No problem. Okay, let us please move to item number four: oath of office to incoming commissioner. All right. Um, we have Sarah there to swear Scott in. Yes, thank you. Happy to be here. Let's see. Okay. Pull up my oath here. All right, please um, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Scott Bangle. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, in the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter upon which I am about to enter congratulations commissioner thank you welcome congratulations congratulations and welcome aboard thank you so much we're happy to have you good to be here and now moving forward let's move to agenda item five once a year our commission chooses a chair and a vice chair and along with that also there's two committee seats which have to be assigned. So at this point, we had pushed it back a month because of uh, Rick being absent the last time and a vacancy on the commission. Now that we have a full commission, I'd like to open the floor for uh, nominations. Uh, Chair Gidrice, and... I'd like to, I'd like to uh, follow standard protocol and uh... Move uh, Tony up to the chair position and have Bill Ackerman as vice chair. I'll second that. Thank you. And I uh, second it. And I'd like to ask for a vote on that. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 And against? Well, congratulations, Tony and Bill. And now I'd like to ask if we could please choose the members for the committees. We have the Citizens Advisory Committee. Uh, if I may. Uh, Amphitheater Committee, we've already got members of. We're not going to change them. I apologize for that. Hello, John. Uh, yes, a point of order. Um, I guess former Chair Gidroyce. Um, at this time, would you like to transition um, the uh, procedures of the meeting over to our new chair? Okay. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. And then also, um, Chair Amorelli, um, the appointment of committees is actually a discussion item, which is um, item number 10, which is later in the agenda. Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah, I saw it. Okay. All right. Tom, thank you for your leadership. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot, Tom. You bet. Thank you, Tom. Job well done. Okay. Very well done. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Do we? Ha okay. Let's start from scratch then. Uh, presentations. Do we have any tonight? There are no presentations tonight. No, no presentation. Uh, can we get an approval of the minutes for the meeting of uh, the last meeting, which was January the? I don't even have the date on here. Let's see, January the fourteenth, January fourteenth meeting. I guess we get approval of minutes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. So I'll second, second that. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved Bill, by Bill Bill Ackerman, seconded by Tom Gidry. Any further discussion on that one? Can I can I vote on that or should I abstain? You should uh, abstain. You should have actually. I think you should abstain because you weren't here for the meeting. I mean, did I, did I do that right, uh, Jonathan? That's the right That's way to correct, go. Sir. I didn't make a mistake there. <laughs> okay. All right. We're ready to go. Okay. As we well with me. Okay. Uh, the agenda approval or modification. Do you have any public comments to, to be made tonight? Uh, did we take a vote on the minutes? No. Yes. Oh no. We we approved them, but we didn't vote. All in favor of the minutes. Aye. 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 And I'll abstain. Okay. Minutes have been proved in the, and uh, approved. All right. We we'll go to public comments now. Is there anything in the public comments tonight? Oh, uh, point of order, Chair Amarelli. Uh, number eight, agenda approval or modifications. Uh, just a note for the commission, there are no modifications to the agenda. No modifications. Okay. Oh, uh, all right. Well, well wait a minute. One, one question. Uh, there's no modifications to that, but the um, the question that came up to in the week was um, from um, Councilman Dean Bynes that uh, nothing had been mentioned in the minutes for the approval for the top of the, the stadium. You know, um, is that a part of a modification or is that just something that we're going to bring up later? I, I will uh, provide an update on the amphitheater during the director's comments, 11.1. Uh, okay, good enough. All right. All right, then uh, we'll go then to uh, number nine. Any, any public comments now? Nothing? No, there are no public comments. Okay. Uh, going to item number 10, uh, discussion items. That's 10-1 uh, would be the committee appointments. Is there any discussion on those or do they stay like they are? Or how are we going to uh -huh. handle how? If I may, there are um, two um, committees, subcommittees for this commission. One is the Menifee Citizens Advisory Committee. Right. Um, uh, just a reminder to all of our commissioners and an introduction for uh, Commissioner Bangle. The Menifee, uh, Menifee Citizens Advisory Committee is actually made up of um, two appointees from this commission, two appointees from the Planning Commission, and two appointees from the Senior Advisory Committee. The advisory, uh, Citizens Advisory Committee works together to allocate the CDBG funds for the city. And the um, advisory committee also um, does the selection of the citizen of the year um, based on the citizens of the month that are appointed by city council. So um, currently um, the commissioners appointed to the advisory committee are um, Chair Amorelli and Commissioner Gidroyce. I would make a, I'd make a motion to, that uh, we keep those the same. I think uh, Tom and Tony are doing a great job on that. Any other uh, recommendations on that or 
Commissioners, if I may. Hi, Stephanie, Deputy City Clerk. Yes. I just wanted to point out just a quick change to that. It will be a two year term limit that was recently updated by the City Council as well. Instead of every year, it'll be every two years that those appointments are changed. Oh, well, all right. I guess that's, that's okay with me. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed being on there, so it's no good for me. Is that all right with you, uh, Bill? Two years? No problem with two years, Bill? Tom. Tom. Uh, <laughs> fine. Oh, oh, Tom, excuse me. Tom's Tom. on there. Tom's on it. Any problem with two years, Tom, or not? No? No, no trouble at all. Okay. All right. So now do we go to the um, uh, park uh, amphitheater ad hoc committee? We're going to vote on that one, or does that stay the same? Um, did we officially vote on the, the two? Uh, there was a nomination, I believe, from... Commissioner Croy, I, I don't know if there was a second in a vote yet. Oh, okay, uh, Commissioner Croy then nominated uh, myself and uh, Tom to remain on the citizen uh, Menifee Citizens Advisory Committee. Um, can that be, can we vote on that or just all approval or how are we gonna vote on that? Individual vote? Is there a second? I will second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Okay, now do we go to the uh, Park Amphitheater Ad Hoc Committee? And that is currently uh, Chair Amorelli and Commissioner Croy. I would recommend that they remain in those positions since they've come this far with it. And so I'd like to make a motion that that be the case. I will second that motion. Been made. The motion has been made and seconded that uh, Rick uh, Commissioner Corey and myself stay on the ad hoc committee for Central Park Amphitheater. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes too, I guess. All right. Um, okay, now we're going to uh, item number 11, community services. Department uh, 11 1 uh, that goes to the director's comment, Jonathan. Thank you, Chair Amarelli. I only have uh, two comments tonight. Um, number one, most important, want to welcome our new commissioner, Scott Bangle, and I want to provide him the opportunity if you wanted to. I know some of, some of us know him better than others, and so if you wanted to just give a, a brief rundown of his uh, past experience uh, as related to this commission and uh, just uh, opportunity to introduce, introduce himself. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, well, I'm uh, married. I've uh, been married for 34 years to my wonderful wife, Cindy. Uh, we have two wonderful children, uh, both of which moved out of state when COVID hit last year. Um, I retired from county uh, employment in 2019 after 39 years of service in the park and recreation industry. Having started my career uh, in San Bernardino cleaning bathrooms, work myself up through the ranks of ultimately retiring as a director uh, for Riverside County. I have uh, experience both with city, county, and special districts. And I have three degrees, including a master's degree in recreation, sports, and tourism. I'm a certified park and recreation professional, and I was inducted into the Parks Academy five years ago, and that's the, uh, that includes the top 75 practitioners and educators in the field of park and recreation throughout the country. Um, having been retired for a year, I decided I wanted to give back to the community. And thankfully, uh, Council Member Carwin appointed me with the help of uh, Mayor Zimmerman giving me an endorsement. So I wanna thank him. And I look forward to assist, assisting the city in completing the vision specifically around the areas of environmental sustainability cultural resources, recreation opportunities, and most important, uh, healthy residents for, of all ages. So thank you. I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Commissioner Bangle, and welcome again. Um, the only other comment I had was uh, regarding the Central Park Amphitheater and an update on that. Our, our ad hoc committee has been working very hard. We've had about three meetings, I think from December to January to review uh, um, different concepts for the amphitheater. I think we have um, uh, are very, very close on a um, amphitheater uh, design that we like. 
Um, we are intended to present that to the commission tonight. Unfortunately, there's a couple of things we still needed from our designer, T.Y. Lin, um, and they didn't provide that until after the publication of the agenda, so we weren't able to include it here. So um, I'm reviewing that information now. What we may do is um, either reconvene our ad hoc committee or um, have maybe a, a special meeting of the commission in the next couple of weeks. So you guys uh, just to focus on the amphitheater. So we'll be uh, providing that information. Um, uh, at, at the worst case, we'll, we'll um, show it during our March meeting, but I, um, I'm i gonna definitely try to work with the commission on um, showing it sooner than that to keep the, the schedule moving forward on that project. Uh, a question for you, John. Yes, sir. Um, so if we call a, a, a special meeting, could we vote to approve it to send it to council for approval? Yes, we could do that. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't mind that because I'd like to uh, move this thing along. Yeah, Absolutely. because that's our next step. And if we can improve it, it'll go to council, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank Jonathan, you. Then, for uh, where is the amphitheater going to be constructed? So we have a, a park already. It's a Central Park, which is in our town center. Um, it's right. Um, next to where the uh, courthouse is. Uh, it's behind the new uh, Fairfield Marriott Hotel. Um, and so we have the park there. We already have a stage constructed where you have electrical there, but the, um, amp the cover of the stage isn't built. So that, that's what we refer to as the amphitheater project is um, creating that full cover of it, uh, putting sound and lighting and just kind of completing the stage. Because right now the stage is really just a concrete slab with a ADA walkway to it. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's all I have for director's comments. Okay, uh, 11, 11 11.2, Parks in Progress update. I guess we go to Bryce for that? Yes, Mr. Howell. Howell, Mr. Yes. Howell, excuse me. I'm gonna go by last names, okay. You can call him Bryce or Bruce, whatever you like. Bruce, Bryce, okay. <laughs> if we can, let's see, go to the next, I think it'll be a couple slides away from here. Right there. All right. Thank you. Um, I don't have too much updates, but I will go through this uh, since we have uh, Commissioner Bangle that's here for a little bit that's new. So I'll just go over it real quickly on this one. Um, just over the last three years, uh, we have taken over uh, seven new parks. Uh, the most recent one, we have Hidden Hills, Menifee Heights, our Centennial Park. I need to take that old name off there. Uh, Mayfield Park, Central Park, and then Silver Star and Creekview are just right down the street from each other that are right in there. Um, Heritage Lake is a is just opened up. That's actually a valley-wide park, and say, so is Mosaic Park. So that's why those are in the different areas. Coming up is Talavera Park. We're still waiting on final inspection for that, for KB Homes to finish a, a little bit of their R&R &R work that's over there. Underwood Park is right next to that. That is over off of McCall, right next to the hospital. Uh, the grading has started on that and we're hoping to get something moving onto there. Uh, they've already started building their homes and everything. And then Remington, Remington Park is actually, the grading's already passed that and they actually started putting in the underground utilities uh, for that park. And then we should have, or I should be able to have a pre-construction meeting with them here in the next week or two. And they'll actually start constructing upwards uh, of the park. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, Evans Park. So as uh, I will bring back a little bit more, but we have the conceptual created for the entire park, but the little six acre parcel, uh, we created the uh, bike trails and pump track for that. And we're working on a few things for the design of that for the plans, and everything to actually be able to take that back to council. So that's a, um, that's why that one still hasn't gone to council, but I'll explain that in the CIP update. Salt Creek Trail in the Menifee area is completed. Uh, Mr. Bangle was there at the very last meeting that I saw him uh, when we were deciding when they were actually going to start before COVID. So I think it was a day or two before he retired. Um, and then the other parks that are just up and coming, uh, Cottonwood Park, that would be our big park, which is over by uh, off of Evans across the street from our Case of Cineros, right up the street from there, which is going to be a decent size. Cimarron Ridge, Cantalina, the Golden Meadows, and Legato and Minor Ranch. A few of those are going to be bigger parks, and hopefully some of those will get going a lot sooner um, in the next few years. Uh, that We have a total of 35 parks that are almost about 200 acres. Uh, once we get that, and then within the next 
our next four parks will be another 37 acres uh, once we get those built. And that's all I have on that. If anybody had any questions just for the parks in progress. I ha had a question, bear with me. This is yes. all new to me. Go, can you go back another slide, back it up one? So the two green ones that indicated it went to um, Valley Wide. So the city develops the parks and then turns the keys over to Valley Wide? No. no so, oh, you want to go, go right? Go ahead. Okay. No, uh, typically we, you know, these are our new develops, uh, new housing developments where they're building the parks. And then um, those two in particular were already planned to go to Valley Wide um, several years ago. So uh, as you, as I think most people know, there was a lot of housing developments um, that were planned um, in the 2000 five to 2007 range. And then of course stalled due to the economy and they kind of started back up again. So they uh, already received their entitlement had their track max, maps approved back then even before the city was incorporated. And so when they picked back up and continued they were already um, annexed and planned to be into Valley wide. But any new developments that are uh, coming forward now um, like the Audie Murphy Ranch development the party home centennial development which is number two on there. Um, those are going over to the city. So I guess my question, Jonathan, is when there's a park built in Valley White's territory, they condition it and they inspect it and approve it and accept it. If there were to be another park in the future built in their territory, would you guys have a role? Would the city have a role? Yes, and actually um, number two on there, Menifee Heights Centennial Park, um, that is actually on the east side of town off of Holland. So that's, uh, uh, typically that would have been a valley wide area, but that is a park that went to the city. So any parks on the east side of the city, east of the 215, that would have normally been valley wide if the city didn't incorporate and start its own parks department are now going into um, the, the city. So uh, number eight, nine, and 10 are actually examples of that. Um, they're, they're, they were all on the north uh, east side of town, just north of Newport. Um, just south of that, like the Heritage Lake area. Um, those are all being built and all going to be in the city CFD, not Valley wide. Thank you very much. You're welcome. If I may, just so you know, the reason we put those parks on there, there's still our public parks and the, yeah. that were complete in here. So that it's just to let the public know that they're still there. And, um, and also to answer another part of your uh, question, uh, Commissioner Bangle, um, even though some parks are going to annex into Valley Wide, um, they still go through our planning process, review process, myself and Mr. Howell. And I'm not sure if I gave a proper introduction for Mr. Howell. He's our park and landscape manager. He oversees all the maintenance of our parks and all the construction and development of our parks as well. So uh, he and I still review, uh, even if it's going to be a Valley Wide, and, and Bryce will do the ultimate inspection on the park before it opens. Thank you. Go to the next. And, uh, are you going to go to the next slide? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead and go one more. Yeah. And then we can go to the next. I'm, I'm finished with that. And for the recreation division update, I'm going to hand it over to Miss Aisha Jamont Wilson. She's our community services coordinator that oversees our senior center and older adult programs. And a lot of other things too. <laughs> Aisha, are you there? Did you unmute? She was on there a minute ago. Still can't hear you, Aisha. Sorry. Is your head? Are you, Hello? Is, well, there you go. There you go. There. Okay. Sometimes it doesn't let me decide on where, where my audio is going to come from. <laughs> so sorry about that. So um, for January, um, majority of our classes resumed uh, are virtually and um, uh, some of our, our Tiny Tots classes resumed as well for the, to start the new year. So um, we rounded off our probably one of our highest months um, since COVID started. Uh, we revenued 14,394. So with just our contract classes, we were able to uh, revenue over $9,000 alone in contract classes. Um, and that was a large increase for this month. Um, Year to date, we've revenued 41, 933 and 66, or 60 cents. Um, next slide. 
So we currently have 14 contract classes, um, two of which are fairly new to um, City of Menifee and um, over 141 participants that are participating in our virtual contract classes. At this time, we are still um, virtually and we're hoping that you know in the next month, we're able to be more satellite and offer programs uh, outdoors and maybe eventually um, transition into indoor activities. Um, we have nine staff-led classes, which um, have 173 participants enrolled in our program. Um, a lot of our um, field usage uh, started up this next uh, this past month, and so we have over 1,168 participants um, utilizing our fields. Um, and at this time, there are no uh, games, but they're mostly practices and um, uh, going on in our fields. Uh, contract classes youth sports, which consists of our basketball program, and it, there's currently 45 participants. Next slide. So with our uh, uh, senior meal distribution, as uh, we're continuing our distribution daily, um, we've served uh, our daily 490 meals, uh, three day lunches, 800 and 94 meals and our frozen pack, which we distribute on Wednesdays, 714. Um, we've received about four new applicants and um, for our senior monthly box program, the box program that we uh, distribute is on a monthly basis that provides um, a variety of things such as rice, canned ve vegetables, canned fruits, something that's sustainable for a senior for about 11 days. Um, we distribute that monthly and we distribute 500 of those um, total meals to this date, maybe a little bit higher since we've served the, in the new month, but we're over 78,000 meals served um, to seniors in Menifee. Aisha, that 78,000 is from when we shifted um, in middle of March last year to now? Correct. So st from starting from March 13th. So um, hmm. yes. Um, our next, so you guys know, our next food box will be on February 25th, and we actually were able to, we relocated from MSJC to um, Lyle Marsh, and we are going back to um, MSJC to start our distribution again, and hopefully we'll be able to um, stay there um, until school resumes. Next slide. So we're continuing to provide upcoming events um, or a, a special events for our community. Um, this year, our Spring Fest is going to be a drive-through event on April 3rd, and it will be held at the Case Sinestro Senior Center from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. This will be a free event, and um, we're going to. Our goal is to serve or accept registration from 250 cars um, or 250 families and cars. So. Um, we will, um, we will be providing you know, some form of uh, interactive activities as people drive through the parking lot and also goodie bags for, for everybody in the vehicle. Um, our event held by the Youth Leaders of Menifee, our Ready, Set, Future uh, virtual teen summit last year, it was gonna be their first year and I believe in May and unfortunately due to COVID it was postponed and um, this year, they're putting it on virtually. And so the youth leaders of Menifee are really excited to offer a variety of workshops for all high school students in Menifee. And that's gonna be on April 6th and it'll, it'll be a three-day event um, that will take place. Um, and then our last uh, upcoming event that we'll be planning or we'll be collaborating with um, Habitat for Humanity will be Menifee Better Together on April 24th. Um, the committee just started meeting this past month and they're just working this month, they're working on logistics and how they're going to um, have this event. I know it, it will be tweaked due to COVID. And so I know we'll get more information for next month as to how people could register and how the program is gonna run this year. And with that, does anybody have any questions? No, no questions, but uh, Aisha, thank you and your team. You guys uh, are doing a lot in these incredibly challenging times. I mean, the meal distributions alone, are just amazing. What an amazing number and uh, speaks volumes for your guys' efforts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. I have one, I have one question, Alicia. You know that um, your uh, 500 program here with a 500 box program, yeah. how long does that last? Those people? I think, did you say it's good for 11 days or something? How long does yes. that last those people? So one box could last up to 11 days. It may be longer because it's it's about, it's a 40 pound box. And so there's canned, there like grains such as rice. So it just depends on, you know, someone's appetite, but right. I mean, it's fairly um, a large box. And sometimes uh, with some of our, or we, we work with community action partnership. And so sometimes we have additional partnerships for the month and they'll provide maybe fresh produce or additional boxes. So like this past month, um, there were additional boxes of uh, cliff bars, the little protein bars that were distributed. And so um, every person received like, uh, I don't know, 60, almost 60 bars or something like that. Um, so in addition to their box. So um, it, it does, it's very beneficial. You do a good job with that. That's helping the people but pretty good on that one. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. Oh, I Thank have one you. other question. Well, I, I, maybe it won't be, it's not in your, uh, program probably, but um, maybe it'll be Jonathan will come up. Uh, are we are we getting to the point where they're going to start letting the youth um, start interacting, or are they just going to keep practicing right now? Is that anything going on in that youth program yet, or not? Are you going to cover that later, or sports fields and stuff? Are you going to cover that? Oh, uh, yeah, Chair Morelli, uh, for sports fields, we're monitoring that very closely. Uh, as you probably all know, um, we get the directions from the state um, through the county and it comes to us. And so right now we, um, as uh, Ms. Jamal Wilson uh, mentioned, there are many youth out there that are um, allowed to practice. So soccer teams, um, even uh, football, baseball um, are out there uh, practicing. They're just not allowed to do contact sports. So as much as we can accommodate them, we um, have the fields available, have the, um, and let, let them um, go out there and do that. And we're monitoring it closely. Once uh, we um, get more information about the ability for them to play and actually have games and tournaments, then we'll adjust our schedules and allow them to do that as well. Is, is that, that's all controlled by the state right now? Is that what's all in the yes. back? Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, now do we go to 11.5 capital improvement program update? And that is back over to Mr. Howell. All right. Thank you, John. Okay. Uh, I'll go over this. The parts and progress or parts, sorry, park amenity enhancements. I'll show you that it's in progress. Uh, that's Nova park that we're going. I'll show you in the next slide when we get over to it, the irrigation are still pending. Uh, we're just waiting for Lazy Creek to get built. And then that this project for this year that we budgeted for is actually for the irrigation pump for Lazy Creek Park. Uh, we didn't want to put that in before we start tearing other, everything else up. Evans Park design is in progress. Uh, the, the actual design of it, we, you guys saw the conceptual everything. We actually have to get it engineered and everything for the pump track to be able to take back so we can get that going. Um, get that built. So it kind of put us back uh, probably about six to eight weeks, but we'll still be ready for, we're trying to track to get that built for summertime. Uh, the park lighting, the LED fixtures uh, were actually ordered. They get delivered in March and then we actually had the hardware for it uh, delivered yesterday. We're going to start installing those next week at Lyle Marsh and at Nova Park, just so when the fixtures come in, the poles, we could just put those in with the bullers and everything. We don't have to waste waste any time. Um, those LED fixtures are actually solar that are gonna be installed. So we didn't have to run any electrical or conduit at the park. We just had to put the footing in um, and, the, and they work. Uh, they're commercial grade, they work real well. The sports field lighting, it's in progress. As you guys know, that is under plan review, we're getting the engineering from Musco and also the poles and everything are being manufactured right now. So we're moving along on that and hoping to get that moving real quick to where we can start uh, actual putting those big footings in and putting the poles in the 70 foot poles at uh, Centennial Park. Lays Creek Recreation. So that got pushed back just two weeks. We had a protest that we, from one of the, the bidders, which was a, a correct, nothing wrong with that. We just had to um, address that. Once we did, now we're able to take that on the 17th to get the construction contract approved from council so we can start construction hopefully by March and that building will actually start getting erected from there. The parking lot resurfacing, um, we're, I'm working with engineering to um, that will, 
we're going to add on with another project on there when they're doing the streets and we'll get the the parking lot done there at the same time as soon as uh, the, the construction is done for the rec center. The IT upgrades are in progress, still waiting for a proposal for that. We had a walk last month from our vendor and now we're doing that. The trails connectivity enhancements. So Kaya Thomas, as you guys know, was completed, which was just a, a little uh, right away landscape with a sidewalk going before, um, just so Ms. Rangel could know. And it, and there we actually tore all the landscape out, put in new irrigation and put what is called play trail. So we put a DG trail that goes through it so everybody can walk around and integrated in that trail are little pockets for kids to play with some benches if the parents wanna sit there. So um, that was something new that came out. We put that there. We also are doing the same thing at Nova Park. Um, those are in, but some of the, we still have a couple more things that we gotta finish on that, but that one's almost done. Uh, the permanent park restroom is still pending. We brought that to you last month. We will be bringing that to council, uh, hopefully by the third, and then we can start moving on that. And the sports court resurfacing is completed and the shade structures are in progress. And I'll show you a little update on the next slide. If you could go to the next slide, please. The, um, this is the park community enhancements that we got going on. This is Nova Park. So the, there's actually more built now uh, as of today. That was just built. Um, it kind of put us back with the rain where we were having the footings, everything. We had to pump some water out. So the actual uh, playground that we tore down, the new one's being erected. The, the maintenance team is actually, our maintenance team in-house is actually building this one just like Lyle Marsh. We, um, as you see those poles at the, with the skid steer there, that's being those, those are anywhere from 500 to 700 pounds each. Those are the large poles that are gonna be the shade sail that goes over the new playground that's on there. We're about 80% done as of today with the playground. Looks like we'll probably finish it. If not tomorrow, we'll have that uh, the actual whole playground built by Monday uh, of next week. And then we will have the shade sails installed, or just the poles the next week as well, pour the concrete the following week and the rubber surface is uh, scheduled for the week of the 22nd uh, of February. And then we can open that play structure back up for the, the park there for the community. Next slide, please. So the shade structures, as we know, we started at Spirit Park, the same with those, that little bit of rain, put that back just a, a, almost a, a week or so. They are um, digging in. Those are larger footings that go on those poles. They're about five foot deep, about five to six feet wide. So that's why uh, once it rained, they didn't want to open those back up because not only will it fill up with water, it could erode all the stuff underneath and mess with the rubber surface that's already there. We the, the least amount of digging underneath that is um, what we want on that. So those ones are going in by next month. When I bring those up, you'll be able to see the poles that are going in there. So at Spirit Park, uh, we started. Audie Murphy will be next, and then we'll go to Cent our, um, Silver Star Park. And then also at Centennial and Audie Murphy Park, once we get over to Audie Murphy, we're going to be putting in the bleachers over the shade as well. And that's all. And if we can go to the next slide, and then I'll uh, that was it for my CIP update. If you guys have any questions on that. Okay. Hmm. Then I'll just jump right into the maintenance division update. We had 19 work orders submitted, uh, completed 18 over the next month uh, as and just a, the maintenance team that's going out there. So not only are we uh, they do the baseball fields, drag those uh, twice a week, sometimes three times a week. Once the games start picking up, um, doing our main our inspections, any kind of repairs like that. They're building the play structure there at Nova. And then the you can see the benches they put in on the play trails. We put in two new drinking fountains this month as well. So uh, the, our maintenance team is pretty busy installing a lot of new stuff, upgrading these parks, keeping them nice and doing all that. And if you guys have any questions on any kind of maintenance update. I have one question. Uh, yes. You know the drinking fountains that you show the picture of there? Yes. Are, are, are you putting those into all the parks or just some of them or are they going everywhere? No. So there's a few parks that actually, most parks already have those. Uh, a lot of the older parks the that we, when we received them from the county, when they were built back then, they didn't have nice didn't, like, yeah. like this. The older parks have like a nice, it was just a concrete um, a drinking Foundation, fountain. Yeah. So we're removing those so that way this one has an ADA, uh, especially this one that was next to the Lyle Marsh, that playground right there, 
or sorry, that that drinking fountain right there is actually at Lyle Marsh, the all-inclusive playground that we put in. So it didn't have access to the wheelchair. So we, we put that in there, but we are putting it at whatever parks we need. And there's a couple more we put in that um, that have the water bottle fillers too. We're trying to change out those so the sports fields have those. Well, I noticed you had the ADA on this one. That's why I wondered, you know, the handicap, right? Okay, I'm just yep. curious. Okay, all right. And that is it for yours? That's David? it for me. Okay. The next, uh, let's see, that was maintenance division. That's taken care of. So now we go to uh, item number 12, commissioner reports on committee activities. Do we have any reports from anybody on that? Rick, you got anything on that? Yeah, I'll raise my hand. Um, I was very pleased uh, last week to attend in the uh, Salt Creek opening. Uh, I know, Scott, uh, you've been around a couple years. <laughs> We've been waiting a little while for that, uh, only 30 years. But uh, <laughs> it was a great event. Uh, the, we dedicated the county, actually dedicated uh, the beginning of the trail at uh, Aldergate to Marty, uh, God bless him, and uh, Lynn Maddox, who was there. Fortunately, fortunately, I, I was I'm quite honored to see uh, see him he was thrilled uh his his girls were thrilled i talked to them afterwards and it, it was it made Mar it made uh lynn's uh lynn's day that's for sure um uh i happened to uh uh go down to minifee bikes and uh, get me a couple of beach cruisers and we've gone on that thing a couple times and they did a great job grading that because uh, as i said uh, it feels like you're going downhill both ways so uh it, uh, it's, it's really good. And uh, the, the signals work great. Um, and uh, what, a, what a great amenity to add. And I think, uh, I think uh, as you can all see that it's, it's heavily used right now and it's just a wonderful thing to have. And uh, I'm just glad we got to do it. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Are there any other commissioner reports on anything? Okay, if not, we will go to item number 13, uh, future agenda requests. And uh, I guess that go to Jonathan, a joint, joint meeting. Is that going back to you, Jonathan? Yeah, I actually, I only have uh, one update on uh, future agenda items um, for the commission. If I can uh, advance to the next slide, please. Um, one of the items that um, the, the commission outlined a while ago is uh, to continue to look into options for senior transportation. And a grant was recently released by RCTC, Riverside County Transportation Cooperation. It's a Measure A grant. Um, and we're exploring that. Um, Mariana Mitchell uh, participated in a grant workshop a few weeks ago. One thing that we're looking at is um, a, a, a kind of a uni unique idea. Instead of uh, attempting to create our own trolley or bus system within the city, maybe um, work directly with um, RTA and their existing dial ride program. And um, I, I know some uh, commissioners and especially the senior advisory committee members have mentioned that the dial ride program can be very expensive, especially if it's you know seven dollars one way, or I think it's actually three fifty one way. Then to come back, it's seven dollars. You know, just to go to the store. It could be quite expensive for someone on a fixed income. So what we're looking at is um, um, developing a program and submitting a grant application where we could possibly cover that seven dollars and and have that available to provide rides to um, seniors that need it. So that's the application um, that we're developing and um, hopefully turn in on the next two weeks. Um, and we'll notify and hopefully get notified by April if we are awarded. Very good. Very good. Mr. Chair, I have a question for Jonathan. Okay. Can you tell me what annexation of county land for regional park means? Yes, there, um, there is a development right outside the eastern boundary of the city off of Briggs Road, uh, where there's a very large, uh, it's currently a basin. Um, and so there was a plan at one point for the adjacent um, land developer to build um, housing there and then transform that basin into a sports park. And so um, it, it's really contingent on that 
developer moving forward and then also possibly annexing that land into the city, um, which is a whole nother kind of uh, a can of worms right now because the, the city has a hard line at Briggs Road. And when I say a hard line, uh, the city doesn't actually have a sphere of influence over anything beyond Briggs Road. So cities like Temecula or Marietta, they have a, uh, and definitely Temecula has a sphere of in, uh, influence beyond their city boundary line over French Valley. So if there's any development that occurs in the French Valley area, the city of Temecula has some say on the impacts that could possibly um, impact their city or even in the, the unincorporated county areas like, you know, the Pachanga and wine country areas, they have a say on that. The city of Menifee, unfortunately, does not. And we're going through a process right now, working with LAFCO on doing a maintenance service review for those areas just outside of the, the city um, and the impacts that it's having on our city. And then um, looking at um, options to create a, at a minimum a sphere of influence, but in possibly even annexing land to the east. So uh, that's uh, that one um, is uh, on our agenda as a commission. It's something that is of interest to this commission. and identified in a parks master plan, but it's also very much contingent upon, um, you know, city council direction to continue with that sphere of influence or annexation uh, and expanding the city to the east if that's desired. Now, how many acres is it? It's fairly big. I want to say it's um, somewhere around 30 acres on the current basin that's there. It's is that 40. 40, yeah. Is that the one that's across from Heritage High School? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, that's where it is. Right. Yeah, Scott, if uh, you want to give me a ring, I can give you some background uh, details. It's kind of been floating out there for a very, very long time. I can tell you a little bit of the history of it and what it's all about and, you know, you know what we're trying to do moving forward. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Sure. Okay. Um, senior transportation, we've covered that. The trail enhancements, uh, maps, and... Uh, Equestrian staging areas, are you still working on that or is that just in the background right now? Yeah, we're still working on those. I don't have any other updates on any of the other future agenda items. Okay, the other one was the, um, okay, the annexation of county land. Was that the one you're talking about? The last item there, was that? Uh, yes, sir. That, yep. That was the one we were talking about. Okay. Um, I have one, I have one that I'd like to maybe add. Uh, maybe it's just more of an update, uh, but if we can get an update, uh, on the Paloma wash improvements. Uh, oh, yes. That kind of been hanging out there for a while, like to see what's going on with that. Yeah, that is an active CIP project. Um, uh, Carlos Geronimo, uh, that most of you know, our principal engineer over capital projects, um, he's working on that one. We'll provide an update and report on that during the next meeting. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, and that covers just about everything. Is there anything that I missed uh, for my first uh, meeting? Is there anything I missed there other than asking for an adjournment now? Does anybody have any other, anything to add to the meeting? Scott, do you have anything to advise us oh, on? Or? I just want to thank Jonathan and everybody at the city. They've been very welcoming and I appreciate it. And I've been impressed with uh, how professional everybody is. So. It's a real treat to be joining this professional organization. So thank you. Well, I can tell you one thing from just hearing your your background and everything. It looks like we we're really going to have another very very good person on the commission. <laughs> I'll I, do my I, best. I really see that as uh, help. I really do. Okay. Uh, if not, uh, I don't think there's anything else uh, on the agenda. We'll just ask for an adjournment at this time. So moved. Moved and seconded. All in favor. Hi. Hi. Good job, Tony. I tried. Good job, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got boy. through it. Okay. You got okay. this. Better from here, Tony. Huh? It only gets better. Oh, it better <laughs> get better. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Right, Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye. Have a good evening. Have a good evening, everybody. <laughs>